Welcome to Streams of Income with self-help author Ryan Rieger. For the next hour, you'll hear proven methods for how to live the multiple income streams dream. Ryan is passionate about helping others discover their gifts and start their own business. He's published five books, and his courses and group coaching programs have changed the lives of thousands of students all over the world. Ryan's books include Private Label, The Easy Way, Finding Your Grace Place, and his latest, Streams of Income. And now, here's your host, Ryan Rieger. Hey guys, welcome back to the Streams of Income radio show. I'm your host, Ryan Rieger, and today I'm solo again. I have something in my heart I want to share with you, and let me just go. It might, to me, it feels like it's a little bit all over the place, but I want to go after it, and hopefully it blesses you today. Um, I was on a call with some uh, mastermind friends today, and just um, noticed a trend in some of them and some of the emails I'm, I'm getting, and even in my own life. You know, my father passed away in January, and it just feels like some days um, after that, I'm just trying to do what I need to do to get through the day. Um, some days I feel like I'm thriving and some days I feel like I'm just hanging on and surviving. And if that sounds familiar to you, I, I know um, I want to encourage you in this episode because I know from the emails I get and from the people I'm talking to, there's just a lot of folks that are struggling right, right now for various reasons. You may have lost a loved one. You may have lost a job. You may Your business may be looking like it's not going so well. There may just be some circumstances in your life that you don't like that is putting you in like survival mode. One of the girls on our the call we had today was, she was just saying, she's just trying to just survive. She like some of the goals she's had, they, she feels like they've been just put on the back burner and she's just trying to get through each day. She's just really going through some tough times. And so I want to encourage you, if you feel like you're in a position where you feel like you are just um, your, the dreams you've had inside you, you, you may have lost them. Maybe you don't know what they are, whether you are in a position with, you have not even sure what you're here for, what those dreams are, or maybe you had dreams and you feel like you've pushed them down to be more reasonable, practical. Maybe you've had to go the safe route and you would love to, rekindle those dreams and those desires that God's placed on your heart, but you just don't even, you haven't even given yourself permission to do that. So I give you permission today, right now to rekindle those dreams and those desires that God has placed in your heart. Those things that you have longed for that, you know, you were made for and destined for. Um, I want to give you permission to dream about the, them again. And if you are in a position where you're not like, you're thinking, Ryan, I, I don't even know what those are. I've not dreamed in so long. I don't even know why I'm here, what my purpose is. Then hang on. I want to talk to you as well, because I feel like there are people in both of those camps and I'm going to just read some stuff here and hopefully this resonates with you and help me get going on the direction I want to go, go through. I've been reading a book called the power of who by Bob Bodine really enjoying it. He is a local to me. I would love to get him on my podcast. Um, he works in the sports of, uh, area. And this book is about, um, it's called the power of who you already know everyone you need to know, but he said some really powerful things that just been resonating with me. Um, this is a quote from, uh, the movie legend of bagger Vance. And it says inside each and every one of us is one true authentic swing, something we were born with something that's ours and ours alone, something that can't be taught to you or learned something that's got to be remembered. And then a couple other quotes. He, I, I, this is just something that's really have, has blessed me and um, has given me some clarity even in my own life. I cannot impress you strong, impress upon you strongly enough the vital importance of keeping a journal of the pursuit of your dreams and goals. Even if you make an entry only once every few days, a journal will be your most valuable ally in recognizing the patterns of your life. Patterns reveal destiny. So if you're in a position where you're, you're not sure what you're here for, that quote is for you. Patterns reveal destiny. And I'm going to go a little bit, give you some examples of my own life where things in, in, uh, that have been resonated to me, things have been highlighted to me, experiences have left clues for my future. Um, another one here, your recurring dream or vision provides you with valuable clues about the direction you should be heading 
It's important here that you understand that I'm not talking about the common definition of dreams where you go to bed, go to sleep and have a dream. No, what I mean when I use the term dream or vision has to do more with what preoccupies your thoughts during your waking hours. In other words, what's holding your attention? What keeps resonating with you? That's a clue. Your dream is the fire that energizes you toward your destiny. As I've been thinking about my life, I, I can, and hopefully this resonates with you guys. There are happenings, instances, experiences that have, when I'm going through them, I'm like, I want that. I want, I want, I want this. So here, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Back when I was at Huntington University in Huntington, Indiana, I'd already, I was a freshman. I was already um, interested in going into the political field. And so I was sitting down at lunch one day and one of the upperclassmen was talking about a um, American studies program. This is a program that Huntington offered in accordance with the Christian College Coalition where you could spend a semester like in DC or abroad, or I think they had an LA film uh, semester, but he was uh, talking about his sister's experience in the American studies program and how she was interning for one of Indiana's senators. As he was talking about what she was doing, what her life was like, what that semester was like for her instantly down in my heart. I knew I want that. I'm going to do that. And just one of those times that I can vividly remember, it was like, almost like God was speaking to me and you know, he wasn't, I, I believe he was in my, it wasn't audibly. This was the, I was just listening to this guy talking about his sister's experience, but I do believe it was the Holy spirit kind of highlighting his words and giving them more weight to me and birthing that dream in my heart, his words birth that dream of going to the American studies program for a semester, working for a senator. And that's exactly what happened. I worked exactly towards that. The, sum, the last semester of my junior year, I spent a semester in DC. I interned for that exact same senator that this guy's uh, sister did. And that set me on a path down towards working in the political re- arena for several years. I knew that after I graduated college, that I was going to go back and work for that senator. They didn't offer me a job. They hadn't offered me a job yet. I just knew that was going to happen. And that happened. I remember one time in in DC, I was the senator that I was working for was retiring. And I don't definitely don't recommend this. um, But just in my heart, I knew what was going to happen. And these were like some dreams that were birthed inside me. And it wasn't like I was... um, I was praying about the next step, but I had such a peace about what was going to happen that I'll I'll just explain it here. So I was working for that Senator that was retiring. So, which means I was going to lose my job, um, which uh, at the time should have been really, really scary. I looked for other positions. I started applying. I had other interviews, but nothing just felt right um, until I, um, long story, but I ended up um, meeting with somebody that worked for the local congressman uh, back in Indiana, where I was from. So it was going to be an interview in his DC office after meeting with him and talking with him just for the first time, guys, they didn't even have a job opening. It wasn't, they, there wasn't even a, a position open for me at the time, but I just knew that that was where I was going to be next. And so my friend who was my roommate at the time told me, um, and I remember this, that I would be as he, his Senator also was retiring and he was looking for another position. Um, he was out hitting the pavement, doing what you do with um, you know, finding a job, putting out your resume, getting interviews. I was often down in the basement of the house we were living in playing video games. Now, please, I do not recommend that. I just, um, I just had such a peace and a knowing that that was where I was going to be, that I, my mind was set on that job and I got it. Um, it was all God, all of him, all his grace, all his favor. But I just knew that I could kind of, you know, take it easy and not look for any other positions. Cause I knew that was going to open up and it did miraculously. Um, 
now looking back, it sounds like, like, wow, you really need to make sure that you're hearing right. Before when you do that, when you kind of take time off and go play video games, when you should be looking for a job again, not the best advice for most folks. Um, but when you know, you know, you just, you, there are probably times and I'm going to get to this. There's going to be times in your life. You can look back to that. were very, um, just monumental times and experience that you had there, like made you think this is going to be my thing. This is my, I'm going to go here to college. I'm going to do this. Let me give you some more examples. I've known for a long time that I was going to have a business. I I've worked rather regular jobs all the way up until 2008, but I had, if I had a desire for a very long time to have my own business and now I'm living that, um, after reading Jim Cockrum's book, silent sales machine, and, and listening to him talk in, in that book about the E model of making money online, where you're, you become an expert in your niche. I was, it, when I read that, I thought that sounds amazing to actually get paid for something that I know, like what in the world would somebody pay me for? At the time I was very involved in politics, um, but I didn't really see how that equated, um, how I could turn that knowledge of, you know, being in a political uh, office, how that would help me, how, why anybody would pay me for that information. And so I never really connected the dots until later, but now I get paid for experiences, skills, interests that I have. And so it's pretty amazing. Um, and you could do the same thing too, but these are things I just, I knew was eventually going to happen. I didn't know when, um, again, working in DC, I knew I was going to move to DC and live, uh, live there and work for um, that senator. And that happened. Um, there are things now that I still have had experiences in my life where I'm like, they were just very impactful um, and things that haven't happened yet. So for example, I was um, working for the guy running for governor of Indiana back in uh, 99 and 2000. His name was David McIntosh, wonderful man of God. Um, we were uh, traveling around the state. I was his driver and uh, this was before I, I worked for uh, Pence and I would, we were up in Kindleville, Indiana one time. And I um, remember we went to a foundation. It was just a, um, a foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit organization where they did grants. They gave out grants to organizations, schools, that type of stuff. And I remember being in that meeting and thinking, wow, this is really cool. And it was, I think it was a family that started it. And I was thinking, that would be so awesome to, and we had many, many different fundraising meetings. We were all over the place. He was always, you know, trying to run for governor's expensive. So we were always raising money and I was always with him. And I just was in a lot of those meetings with him. And so, but this one, for some reason, just resonated with me. I thought, this is really, really cool. These people give away money for a living. Now, I am not at that place. My wife and I are very generous givers and we, we are, we want to be, and we want to be even more, but how cool would it be to have my own foundation, to be able to give money to all these causes, these ministries that I care about. And so that's a dream in my heart. It's not happened. I don't know if it's going to happen in one year, 10 years, 25 years. I have no idea. But just, it was that experience that I can remember that meeting out of all of the meetings we had in that campaign, hundreds of meetings, hundreds of events that we went to. I remember that one. And I remember being in that meeting thinking, this is cool. How cool would that be? And I remember just to this day, and that has resonated with me. And it's been something on my heart that I would love um, to do. Another one that has not happened yet. Um, that I would love for it to happen is um, we were, this was when I was working for Pence and we had an, a, a um, fundraiser in Evansville, Indiana, Southern Indiana. There was this uh, family, um, Christian family that did a fundraiser for us. And I remember this guy's property. He had a really cool house. And we walked in the door of his house. Very nice, very beautiful, very wealthy guy. Um, the he had on the wall, um, as you opened the front door opposite, there was a wall and one of the stone, it was a stone wall. There's one of the stones had, um, I had this saying on there, look what the Lord has done. And I remember that. And I also remember that he had a separate house down a little bit away. He, he had this, um, long driveway and if you go down that long driveway, you ended up at a whole other house 
which was either his mother-in-law's house or his mom's house. And then opposite his main house was this, I guess you'd call him now like a barndominium, like this very nice extra building that above, um, above the garage there, um, it was like a guest house or um, maybe his mother-in-law lived there or his mom. I don't know if he had both moms at that property or not, but um, I believe that it was his mother-in-law and she had a house um, at down the ways that was nicer than most of everybody else's houses. Um, but again, I thought this is cool. Someday I would love to be able to have property, have a house where either my mom, my mother-in-law or both would be able to, to live with us. And so those are things that I just re- vividly remember that like when those experiences happened, it was like something on the inside of me was like, this is a dream for you. This is something I want you to be thinking about, to be believing for, to be looking forward to. And it's something that's just like a recurring dream, a recurring, not a dream at night, but a recurring thought that I have, like, that would be really, really cool. So I want to ask you, is that, have you had situations where in your life where you had some really cool experiences, maybe you were, maybe you're a car, car person and you rode in somebody's really nice car and you're like, man, this is awesome. And then just something inside of you went, this is for me. I like this. I want this car. Maybe you have talked to somebody that has a certain job and you want that job and you just inside of you, something perked up and uh, like your spirit just lit up uh, when you're having that conversation and you were around that person and you're like, you instantly knew like, this is for me. This is where I'm headed. This is where I'm going. Maybe you went somewhere and you'd love to have a second home at that big place. Maybe you love to be on the beach and you've looked at homes as you're walking up and down the beach and you look at one like, that's cool. Like, and just something more than just, more than just a, like a, a, a quick desire or a quick thought, like, you know, that would be neat, but something like really almost like went off inside you, like um, a seed was planted inside you for, to have that home. Maybe you want to bless people with it, to be able to have people come and stay for free. Um, maybe you don't have a kid yet. And this would definitely be Melaine and I back, you know, several years ago before Callum was born, we would look at people and we would just know like someday this is going to happen. We went through a very painful, uh, several years of having three miscarriages, but we knew in our heart, like someday this is going to happen. I don't know when it was painful. It was hard to wait, but it finally happened. What is that for you? What are those experiences? What are those things? What are those dreams? that when those got planted inside you, it was like, boom, like you just know it happened. And those things haven't happened yet. Maybe some of them have, I guarantee if you look back, some of those things, those, some of those dreams and desires that God placed in you have happened. And maybe you've forgotten about it. Maybe it was a dream or desire to be married. And now you are married. Maybe it was a dream or desire to have a kid. Now you got kids and you're blessed. Maybe it was a certain car that you're driving now. Maybe it's the job you have now that it was a dream or desire once. And now you're living that. Well, what are the things? So thank God for those. Thank God for the things that have happened that you are thankful for that have already happened in your life, the things that you were believing for, and now you see them. But what are those things that you have have yet to be um, manifested? Those things that you just have been believing for that just have not happened yet. I want to encourage you because as I said, dreams are like seeds and that and I was thinking that dreams are like seeds. I think I remember hearing that before. And it was actually a blog post I, writ, I wrote uh, about three years ago. And I'm going to read this to you. So this is called Dreams Are Like Seeds. I am not a farmer, but I know that when a farmer plants seeds, he expects a harvest. Now, if he plants corn on Monday, will he be able to harvest it on Friday? No. Corn takes anywhere from 60 to 100, 100 days to grow. What happens in that waiting period? Does the farmer just go home and wait for it to pop up? Nope. He has to protect that seed, making sure it's getting enough water and preventing pests from stealing his harvest. Dreams are much the same way. I believe God plants dreams, dream seeds. I believe God plants dream seeds in our heart. It's up to us to make sure that seed is in the right environment to grow. We water that seed by the words we speak over it. If you're constantly telling yourself you can't do it or are around people who are discouraging you and the dreams, they'll discouraging you and those dreams, they'll never reach their potential. Those dreams will never reach their potential when you're around those people. You may not tap into it at all, but if you're in a positive, encouraging environment, 
surrounding yourself with people who are speaking life into your dreams and you are watering that seed with your own faith-filled words, that's the opposite of fear-filled words, that seed will grow and turn into a bountiful harvest. It might not always be easy. There will be thunderstorms and pests that come along and try to steal your dream. Things like COVID and just job loss and just stuff of life. But how bad do you want those dreams that have been deposited into your heart? There will always be an opportunity to give an excuse excuse as to why it can't happen. There will be obstacles. There will be days when it looks like nothing's happening. But God is at work behind the scenes. Don't let go of his promises. Don't let go of that dream he's placed in your heart. It will come to pass. How bad do you want it? So I I hope that's encouraging. I just want you to know that God loves you. He has a plan for you. One of my favorite scriptures is Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil to give you hope in your final outcome. Again, from the emails I've received, just from my own experience, from me, people I'm talking to, it kind of feels like a lot of us are just trying to survive from day to day. We're trying to get through each day. Um, you may have lost a family person. You may have lost your job. You may, your business may be going down and you're struggling in business. Just things are not happening right. You've been sick. You know, just depressed because of some of the crazy, crazy stuff happening in the world. I want you to know that Jeremiah 29, 11 is still applicable. Even in this crazy world we're living in, God is still on the throne. He still has an awesome plan for you. He does not care about COVID. He does not care. That does not concern him. It does not cause his dreams, the plans, the things he has for you. It doesn't cause them to be on hold. It doesn't cause them to be go, to go away. Those gifts and callings he's placed in your life are without repentance. If you lean into those, you continually water them. You can, you, you believe again. I'm giving you permission right now to believe again in those dreams that God's placed in your heart. Those think about those experiences again, that like that just when you had them, you're like, that would be awesome. Maybe more than, and it was, you know, it was more than just like, this is cool. I'd like to have this. It was just something went off inside of you. You're like, wow, this is for me. Someday I want this. And you just knew like that someday it's going to happen someday, you know, with um, hard work, with, you know, continue believing God, keeping your faith out there that God could bring it to pass for you. But I know some of you have stopped dreaming. You've squelched those dreams. You've pushed them down. Uh, life has happened and it's allowed, it's, it's prevented you from continually to continuing water in those dreams. And you just haven't seen them come to pass. I want you to know that God can still bring that dream to pass. So I hope that's encouraging to you. I want to get you on um, um, the links in the show notes. I have a link to the book, the power of who, which has been a real blessing to me. And also my book, Finding Your Grace Place, you can get the, the free that I'm holding the paperback version. You can get it on Amazon, but I will put a link in the show notes for the PDF copy of it. You get it completely free. It's just an ebook um, in the back. It just, you know, here's just what it says and find your grace place. You will discover how dearly loved you are by the father and that he has an awesome plan for your life, what grace is and how it will work in and through you to produce the God kind of results how to identify God's purpose for your life, how to overcome past mistakes and step into God's plan for you and how relying on the Lord will produce effortless results and much more. So hope this is a blessing to you. I want to get it in your hands, but I love you guys. This is an honor to do this. Um, I just know some of you are struggling and I hope this is a a blessing to you. Um, Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Send me an email, ryan at ryanrieger.com. I pray for you. Let me know if there's something specific I can pray for you about, if you have a need in your business that you feel I can help you with. So have a blessed day. See you next week. You've been listening to Streams of Income with self-help author Ryan Rieger. From right here in the Dallas Metroplex, Ryan teaches several entrepreneurial courses and group coaching programs to students all over the world. Be sure to listen next week at the same time for Streams of Income with Ryan Rieger.